this is the first time on Battle of the Ports that we've covered a game where even the original is completely rubbish. What chance do the ports have of being entertaining? Quite a lot actually, but for all the wrong reasons. Pit Fighter was a game that left a very sour taste in my mouth about western developed arcade games, which has never gone away. What we have here is an attempt at a realistic fighter, but what we end up with is a game that looks rubbish even when it was released, with poor controls and very questionable collision detection. Oh, and a fighter that looks like he's crapped in his pants. Mega Drive port isn't too bad, but that doesn't mean it's good. It does have pretty much the same feel to the controls as the arcade game, for whatever that's worth. The graphics have taken a massive hit, however the audio isn't that bad. If you listen closely, you'll hear somebody shouting F*** HIM! It's true, take a listen! At least in the Mega Drive game you actually get some lives, in most versions you have to complete the entire game on the same life bar. It doesn't even refill after rounds. <laughs> Oh my, the SNES version of this game is the worst of them all, the controls are really sloppy, so bad that they make the arcade seem like a master of gaming precision. The difficulty is way too hard and the game has no introduction at all, pathetic like all of THQ's SNES releases. <laughs> Based upon the SNES version and even worse to play, think of the SNES game which was slow but even slower. 
The funny thing is, this version is actually a lot easier. Wow, not bad, not bad at all. The arcade intros are present and the game has all the graphical scrolling of the arcade game. It's just a shame that it controls like crap. The movement seems to be random so pulling off the moves you want is just a matter of luck. Again, this version is horrible to play, just like all the versions of Pit Fighter. Again, just like the Amiga port, this features the arcade introduction screens and all the zooming. That's where the plus points end I'm afraid. Graphically it's not as good as the Amiga, although it sure sounds better. Sadly the game is 100% unplayable, the controls are just broken. Many a time your character will be just standing there doing nothing.
firstly I must apologise for the poor sound emulation on this game. Playing it on a real Lynx does sound so much better. It doesn't play any better though. To be fair this isn't the worst version out there and I do like that there's some sprite scaling to at least try and replicate the arcade game. Unfortunately, sloppy controls and dodgy collision section are the order of the day with this port. The C64 version is actually kind of okay to play for a Pit Fighter port. No, seriously it is. That doesn't mean it's a great game, but at least it's kind of playable. the programmers for trying to replicate the arcade look with all the sprite scaling and so on, but why on earth did they think it was a good idea to do it on the Amstrad CPC? The system just isn't fast enough. I'm dead serious when I say this game is 100% unplayable. As you can see it's extremely slow. So slow that it's impossible to know if your button press has actually registered with the game. You'd be forgiven in thinking you're actually trying to control a rolling demo, it's that unresponsive. Looking just like the Amstrad CPC version but playing much faster, this is actually a really impressive bit of software for the ZX Spectrum. It's just a shame it plays like crap, like every version featured in this video. Same old issues that I've mentioned a million times, but at least it's technically pleasing which is something positive. Thank you. 
is okay for what it is, but that's the problem. This isn't much to start off with. Better than the SNES and Game Boy as far as playability goes, if that means anything. Pit Fighter was even going to be released on the Atari 7800. It never did though, and all that remains of the game is this basic beta version. Needless to say, it's awful in every respect. <laughs> 